Hey, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. We've got something really cool today. We are announcing that Sir is joining the Sweetwater family. We've got Andy Wood with us to uh, to help us celebrate yes. the big launch. And yes. of course, the lovely and talented Don Carr. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> Happy to be here. Man, so we've been doing sales meetings. We've been talking to the sales engineers and uh, introducing them to this whole uh, this whole Sir thing. And you've been with Sir for a long time. Yeah, I, I think it's like 13 or 14 years now. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited to to be here at Sweetwater because I feel like it's a, a great relationship and it, it's, the, you know, the right fit. It's Man, it really is the right fit. Yeah, That's exactly right. it. And you got your signature guitars, yeah. you got signature pickups, you got a signature pedal, the compressor. Working on that signature and, t-shirt, signature socks. That's it. <laughs> sandwich wrappers. <laughs> Cover the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> lunchbox. That's what I want. I want the Andy Wood lunchbox. That's there right. You go. Yeah, there it comes you with go. a thermos. Is this your first time here at Sweetwater? <laughs> it is. Yeah. yeah what do you is. think so, so far? I love it. It's yeah. great. Yeah. It's pretty crazy, right? You don't have so much here. I, I feel it's like when we got here, I felt like I already knew you guys and so. Nick. It's like I was like, I feel like I know everybody because the internet does that. You right, know? right, right, right. But yeah, between touring and uh, you know scheduling and logistics, it's just been one of those things that I, I've never been able to come up here. You know? And I've been in Fort Wayne you know, doing shows or whatever, but you're in and out. Right, right. right. Well, I'm so glad it worked out for you to come up and, yeah. uh, like I said, help celebrate this launch. Yeah. Because, man, it's a big it's deal a, bringing, bringing Sir yeah. on here. It's a, certainly a brand that we're super excited about. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 the Ferrari, Lamborghini type yeah. guitar, right? It's the player's guitar. Yeah, exactly. And not to mention, man, it's a whole line. I mean, it's, it's that great on every level. The amps, the pedals, the guitars, all of them, man. It's Simple really pro. just John's passion, mm -hmm. right? I mean, like... He's still the guy that puts on his favorite records while he's working on something. He never really fell out of love with, man, that sounds great. Right. Like, like you know, yeah, never right. got too jaded from the industry or, you know, never became about anything other than trying to make a guitar that, uh, you know, an artist really loves the sound of. And that's, that you know, for, that's really my perspective more than anything is, is John really listens to artists and the products are evolutions of conversations that started with an artist and John, you know, over lunch or, or any member of the team. I mean, you know, serves a, a big company and, mm -hmm. and, and now John's son, Kevin has really become the prodigal son, heir apparent, you know, and he, he and I did woodshed compressor, which is the two of us. And it was, you know, so it's, there's so many great minds over there that are, genuinely passionate about music and guitar and, and amps and pedals and like like you said, Don, it's the like the, thing, yeah. the, the line is, is much larger than right. just one. Again, thing. like you said, it comes starts at the top, man. It starts with him. It starts with John, yeah. man. And that is infectious all the way across the whole spectrum. You right. Know? And people may not know the whole John Sir story. I mean, from his beginnings to working with Bradshaw and all the artists and stuff. Can you fill us in a little bit on, on that? Yeah, background? I mean, I definitely put a cliff note version together for you. <laughs> but but yeah, John, you know, big moments in his career is, you know, starting at Rudy's up in New York, uh, building the really iconic, you know, blonde, amber colored guitar that Knopfler used with dire straits. That was a I think that's the There's one that moment, everybody right? kind of yeah. knows, yeah. right? Yeah. I think if I'm not yeah. mistaken, in the past year or two, they did an anniversary limited run that oh, has cool. the white pickups and the, you know, it's like the carved top or nice. whatever. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and then from there, you know, he did had a stint with Fender and the custom shop, and then you know, being tight with Bob Bradshaw, that that really got more on the other side of the scope mm -hmm. with effects amps and switching systems and working with guys like Mike Landau and Red Beach and legacy guys like Doug and and and, and Scott Henderson to young bloods, you know, it's like, I know I've been with the company 13 years, but I'm still like one of the new guys compared to <laughs> Scott Henderson yeah. and Landau, right? Like they were playing on legendary records before I could walk, you know? <laughs> <Right. It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and, and then, and that, that keeps going forward into, you know, super hot players, you know, Mateus or Andre Neri, or, and in Australia, James Avanye, and, and all these different players across the scope, you know, Ian Thornley, all of those artists, you know, that's the conversation when we get in a room together. It's like, hey man, what do you like the sound of? You know, and, and that's where signature pickups and, and a guitar like this comes from, mm -hmm. you know? So I was always poking at John, you know, standard uh, Telecaster, has a bigger heel joint and stuff. At the time, I was playing the moderns, 
Right. But I grew up in, in you know, Tennessee being, you know, telly guy. Like Brent Mason was my childhood hero, right? And I was playing in a rock band, metal bands, and working with metal artists and rock artists. So obviously the modern mm-hmm. Suits d- that very does well. that, does yeah. that thing. Right, right. And so I would see pictures of myself with a guitar like this. So it'd be like crazy top. <laughs> right, gorgeous. You know, purple or green or whatever. And I'd be like, man, that guy, you know, I'm the guy that wears a denim jacket. And it's like, <laughs> that guitar looks nicer than I do. And so <laughs> I would see old photos of me playing my old tellies as a kid. And I'd be like, well, that's what I look like. And then on top of that, this body shape has a sound. Like as all guitars, like certain shapes just, the 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 sound flows in a certain way. And um, I was like, man, what if we could marry and and evolve? I don't want to change what the the classic T is. I just want the playability that this has. And if you mm-hmm. flip that over, that heel joint was what yeah. I was in love with. So we married that to this. And this was the first um, signature uh, product as, on the guitar side that was really, really from the artist perspective mm-hmm. of like, John actually didn't even want to do it. He was like, oh, man, nobody wants that. So finally, <laughs> I, I, I beat him up long enough that he was like, I'll build one, and it'll be for you, and, and that'll be the end of it, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's it. So that was the black one, the silver. And it was eight months later. We're like, yeah, we're going to make Here we are. Here we are. You yeah, know, yeah, so, right. yeah. And it's actually, this year's the 10-year anniversary of that wow. that prototype. And wow. they did the prototype by hand. You know, it's like it was a yeah. complete, right. you know, that's fabricated cool, kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, so just some cool Mythos and, yeah, and the, lore, the lore. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. 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 Man, that that whole handcrafting thing is a, is a big part of the story because, and, and you use this line, and I'm going to steal it, that many manufacturers have custom shops. Yeah. But basically, Sir is a custom shop. That that is what they are. That's what they do. Yeah. yeah. There's one group of folks that do everything. Yeah. Right, you know. And that's 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 it, right? Like I mm-hmm. always compare it to Ferrari. It's like that car that they're send into Leclerc is going to be the same car they send to you, you know? Yeah. And and the only uh, caveat might be the right word where it's like, sir might tool up and do a handful of moderns or classics all at once, you know, maybe 10 or 15 guitars where they can do them in a row, but it's still the same exact process as if you would get a one-off guitar. They just happen to have things lined up yeah, right. to do that. To do another yeah, one. To do right, it's going to be same We're spec. We're going to cut 10 yeah. modern necks or yep. whatever. And then, uh, the, uh, then, you know, when it comes to what sets them apart on the guitar side, I think the most important thing is the fact that the necks are cut and then they're dried. A lot of manufacturers cut the necks, slap the frets on it, put it together. That's And that's great for them. Um, you know, John's, he's peculiar and he wants things right. And the only way to take something that's imperfect, like a piece of wood... Yeah, I mean, you guys know, you cut 10 necks, it's like they're all going to move with the weather differently mm-hmm. and the humidity. So he gives the next three months to, to cure before they get frets on them. So when the frets come on the guitar, these pockets aren't shifting where the frets right. setting it, right? Yeah, and everything's that, completely dried out at that point to where it's like, okay, we're stable. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not yeah. the most cost efficient way to do things, but it's the right way. Yeah, and right. I think if there's something to take away from the conversation, it's like John's more concerned with the right way right you know that way i mean I, i'll tell you right now as a guy that travels all over the freaking world i took three guitars uh to italy and england and got them out went to the gig i think i moved the b string up not not here but like tuned it up sharp maybe <laughs> 10 cents yeah and then it was like right that came across the right. planet you know and it's like yeah. they're just always super reliable and you know, it's like throw if it's cold outside, taking your guitar from your house into the back of the the car into the gig, it's like it's gonna move all over the place. These these don't really give you any fit. You makes know? it easy for your techs, right? Yeah, it makes it easy. And and if you don't even have a tech and you just there. play just <laughs> yeah. play in the local <laughs> bar, yeah. it's just nice to go in there and be like, I think it's more valuable if you don't have a tech, that's right? Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> that's but that's thing. that's the thing is that uh, and you've used this phrase as well, I'm gonna steal it also, is that these are really John really builds player guitars. Yeah. They're they're for people who play i stole that phrase from him well there we go i mean like john you know i've known him for years and the number one he's, he's like man nobody's gonna play that i said that's the way he rationalized it it's right. never in nobody's gonna buy that it's always in the way it's gonna play that or, this is what you would play this is how you would think about it. you know one of the things features here was um putting this on a uh 
uh, this is a serious parallel for the, the bridge because I was, I, you know, in my ignorance of my youth, I was like, you know, we'll split the back one. He's like, you don't want to split that. He's like, I'll do it for you. And then we'll try it with a series parallel. And then, it, of course, his version sounded better. And I was like, yeah. And it had no no noise. You yeah. Know, when you split a right. coil, it has noise. And right. Yeah, he's, he's really intuitive. And that comes from his sensibility. But that also comes from decades of being around guys like Landau who had complicated guitars, mm -hmm. you know, with mid boosts and switches and this, that, and the and other. And man, and seriously high standards and spe high very standards. specific needs, man. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the more I learned about Mikey, I'm a huge Mike fan, obviously. Yeah. And, and the more I learned about him, it's like, man, he was playing like rounder fretboards, higher action. You know, Scott Henderson plays with his bar sitting way forward mm -hmm. with, you know, bent saddles, which the guitar you're holding yeah. has the bent saddles. And all of these these things are just features, right? There is no there is no best because Ian needs what he needs to be Ian, right? And Scott needs what he needs mm -hmm. to be Scott. And none of us play the same kind of guitar. But what's great about Sir is if you're a customer and you know what you're looking for or you have an idea of the sound of your head or, you, you know, you know the kind of music that you want to make. The team at Sir can more than facilitate. Make it happen for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, right. That's really it. Well, know? speaking of the the different types of guitars and noise and things, this this guitar you're holding is probably the most classic, right? Type of sure. right. Yeah, yeah, definitely the classic. What's the what's the exact model of this? So that is, is called the classic. That's actually one okay. of my guitars that I oh, tour yeah. with. That's my oh, yeah. personal guitar. Okay. And uh, it's mega vintage, like being an Eric Johnson fan. I was like, mm -hmm. what's the most yeah. DJ-ish kind of thing we can do? And that's got nitrocellulose on the finish instead of poly. And uh, I think the most modern thing about it is the fact that it's a roasted maple neck and stainless steel frets. But yeah, that's just called the classic. flatter radius, yeah. right, too. I think yeah. that's maybe a 12 on that one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Uh, of course, compound radiuses are an option. Mm -hmm. On my models, it's just a 16, just straight down. Straight down. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. also has the silent... Uh, Side coil system, cool. yeah. Right, right, yeah right. Tell, that, us, tell us about that. That thing's amazing, man. It, I mean, I was stunned when I plugged. Well, it was the uh, the butterscotch telly over there. Yeah. When I, when I plugged it in my office and I was just goofing around, started turning gain up, and there was no noise. I was like, wait a minute, are these stacks? I had, I didn't know about this circuit at all. Yeah. And, he, and, and it's, it's amazing. It's like, yeah, it's a dummy coil that runs around the the route of the inside of the body. Um, I wish I was more specific, but I'm not an engineer that installs it. But that's yeah. the that's the loose idea. Right. And it's, you know, as a guy that, I, dude, I, I like some distortion. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot. Yeah. You know, so it's like when I play a a classic T, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's great to be able to turn it on and it not sound like somebody turn on the radiator. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> like, whatever, just right. grinding right. at you. Right. So, yeah, that, that's a really great feature that's, uh, again, it's getting the guitar to be out of your way. Like that's something you're not going to think about when you're playing. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what you are going to think about is that refrigerator hum. <laughs> yeah, it's if not it's not there. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And and it doesn't affect the pickups, which I think is really cool in the way that you could use as low and as vintage of a pickup. Man, what if you even had a set of new old stock from 19... 62 that you yeah. love yeah. Mm -hmm. you can get that guitar with that system and those pickups aren't going to hum yeah that's the thing it's you're not buying a pickup you're buying a system that works with right. any pickup which that's is, right that's brilliant man yeah. and it doesn't again like you said it doesn't affect the pickup at all there's no impedance loading you know so you don't get that weird tone change or the feel change or anything man yeah, yeah. and and you know sir's always pushing forward in those like minutia aspects mm -hmm. uh do you want a treble bleed on your volume knob? Do you not want a treble bleed? I mean, there's no wrong answer there. It depends on what your what, what you your statement is yeah. and what yeah. your what your musical aspiration yeah, is. Yeah, what your to workflow be. is, dude, yeah. man. Right. Yeah. Well, man, the, the thing that of course catches your eye and you think of for sure is, is the guitars, the classics, the more modern with all the tops and features and the artists. But the they put that same attention to detail in that same ear yeah. on the amplifiers and on the pedals. So we've yeah. got a bunch of the amplifiers here. Can yeah. you give us a really quick rundown on what we're looking at here? Yeah, right behind us is, uh, this is an SL67 with uh, the Andy Wood Signature sunglasses right there on top. <laughs> now that's that's not available to the general public. I gotta specify that. Actually, but this is a really, this is an amp that I've fallen in love with. Now this is the baby brother. I am addicted to headroom. So mm -hmm. I like the big brother, which is the SL68. Mm -hmm. and and uh, it's, you know, it's 412 cabinet that they, they, they've got speaker options if you want 
65s or greenbacks or whatever. Um, but this amp has really blown me away. Uh, I was, you know, just a short story. I was lucky enough to buy one of Eric Johnson's personal amps, and it's a 1969. You know, it's like that thing. That's a score. Yeah. It's also the amp that I do not want to put on the back of a <laughs> track and trailer <laughs> and send it down the highway. You know, and we all love those style of amps in that era. And John has been, you know, in the game so long. I don't think he knows how many late sixties plexis he's been in mm -hmm. and worked. And we're not talking about random people's plexis. We're talking about, you know, Doug Aldrich's amp or, you know, Billy Gibbons amp or whoever it might be. Right. right. And so those amps, you know, Marshall, when they were building them, when they, when they ran out of a part back then, they just, this bin's empty. We'll just move it and do this cap right. until we run out of this. So that's a, you know, it, a lot of people talk about mojo and vibe and stuff like that. Well, that distills down to a reason why this one sounds, there's an engineering reason why it does. So the, where I'm going with this is, you know, John's been in so many, this is his idea of his favorite, you know, of that style of amp. Right. And there are some options on the front. If you're into the Van Halen one thing, as we all are, take your hand, roll it across, flip the switches over. It's amazing too how much the switches affect the tone stack when the volume is down hmm. and clean and how little they affect the tone stack as, it, yeah. as it's cranked up, right? <laughs> right. But, and yeah. I use it as just a big, loud, clean pedal platform. I, I, I'm, you know, again, being an EJ fan, I'm, I like stacking things to get my, my lead tone. It makes it really vocal and, right. and singing and smooth and stuff right, like right. that. So that's how I use this amp. And across the board behind you guys, you know, PT100 is Pete Thorne's amp. Pete's one of the best in the game and knows tone. I mean, mm -hmm. he really does. So his amp is a completely different machine. It's a three channel, clean, medium, mean, you know, and then it's got a baby brother called PT15 that's a really great amp for those that are recording silently. And uh, maybe maybe you're even at like the, you know, the worship kind of player that's playing at church. Sure, silent they're, stage they're, kind of thing, yeah. Hey, they're for sure not going to be allowed a 412. <laughs> yeah. You don't worship the Lord no, no 412. That's not, that's not, not on Sunday that's morning, forward. man. That's not Sunday morning. So the PT-15 is really great because it has the uh, Sur reactive load built in with the IRs. Um, a headphone out even, like mm -hmm. all the way wow. down to that. An amp that sits below it is Bella, which if I'm not mistaken... And I probably am, but if I'm not mistaken, it's built on it's it's built on the idea of one of Scott Henderson's old blackface amps, and that amp kept getting modded until it kind of was no longer that. Yeah, <laughs> came yeah. new. And if came I'm not mistaken, thing, yeah. that's what ended up being Bella with the switchable 22 to 44. I mean, you and I, Tennessee boys, yeah, it's like right? that 22. I know it, man. Is a thing. And then that big headroom. If you want is the headroom, man. Yeah. You know, so it's cool that that amp's got both, and it comes in some options with with a reverb, without a reverb, uh, and, and all those, you know, just variances. A across from that is John's most recent love affair. Um, he's a mega ZZ Top fan, and he and I will just listen to ZZ Top early ZZ Top records. You know, kind of just close our eyes, like that's the sound. You know, that's the <laughs> yeah. sound, right? And uh, he and I love Trace Ombres, both of us do, but he. He just went the next step, and he was like, okay, you know, Billy Gibbons, Brownface, sold a ton of Marshalls because everybody thought they were Marshalls, right, and right. they weren't, right? right? So he wanted to do the perfect Brownface, and it was the same kind of love that he had for these old British-style amps put into that. And anything less than three is a great country, clean, even jazz right. gig kind yeah, of right, amp. Right. And then when you wind it up, it turns real yeah. swampy. Yeah, right. Very, yeah. Yeah. It gets real Texas-y. Right, very right, cool. Yeah, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> turns into that yeah, thing right, in a right. hurry, right? Um, so yeah, that's the lineup that's behind us. Of course, there's cabinet options. I think there's a hedgehog somewhere. You know, that's kind of the, you know, Alex boutique kind of thing perfected. Right. And I think John's thing is not really trying to invent a trapezoid and tell you it's a wheel. He's just trying to make the most perfect wheel. Yeah. And, and as a touring guy, if you again, if you're even just a club guy, you want something that will work. Man, right. when you plug it in, <laughs> it does awful. what it's supposed to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Again, mean, get, out, like, get, get out of the way. Yeah. 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 Something I got something, like, I, but I got work to do. Like, I got work <laughs> to do, right? And that that's his player-centric mm -hmm. mentality. And I'll... I'll 
keep rolling that forward, that carries over into the pedals that they, they do as yeah. well. Delays and drive pedals, and you've got a signature compressor. I do. This little guy, I've got it turned off right now because its blue light is really and impressively you know blue. When you on. know yeah. when it's on. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Kevin and I did this. So uh -huh. I know I've been saying John's name a lot. Kevin is brilliant, and and he's done some really great designs for the company, including the Discovery Delay. That was one of his pet yep. projects, kind of taking the old world analog thing, injecting it with things like MIDI and presets, creature comforts, right? Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, Woodshed was, uh, that was our COVID project. You know, it's like, Sir was shut down. I was off the road. And so, you know, it was me and Kevin going back and forth on emails and, you know, what, what about, you know? Right, what right. if, you know? So the team approached me about it. I listed all the things I love about my favorite compressors, all the things I hate about my least favorite ones, and and we just kind of got to grinding away at it. And there was a couple of check marks that we all wanted to hit. Mine obviously was tone. Mm -hmm. That that's that's beginning and the end. Um, Kevin's we really wanted it in a small housing, and that I I initially was like I don't care what size it is. He goes, yeah. but what if? And yeah. I was like, ooh, that means I can have more crap on my board. <laughs> I'm now, I'm now listening. Thing, now yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> so we figured out some ways. You know, one of my favorite things in compressors that I love is, in fact, that a lot of them, all the ones I like are 18 volt. Um, just a 9 volt with a charge pump and uh, some secret sauce in there to get it to read and feel and sound like it's it, it runs hotter. Get that extra headroom. Yeah, and so basically that just turns into the idea that the top end's not going to get sliced off at 10K like mm -hmm. a lot of compressors do when they start clamping down. And they start feeling really unnatural. I think it's probably the most uh, confused, misinterpreted effect that guitar players get into. To me, it just I just want it to be MSG for my tone. Just whatever I'm creating give me a little bit more of all of it. And I use right. that always on, except for the most high gain scenarios because they're <laughs> compressed already, right? Yeah, man, and the thing the thing that I like about it is not only does it retain the tone, but it retains the touch as well. You can, yeah, I you mean, can, even though you're yeah. getting the benefit of compression, mm -hmm. you you're still get a dynamic range with and it. That, right? And that was another aspect of it. You know, one of the things being a, a guy that's worked a lot in the studio, it's like, those old like Joe Meeks and, and, and 1176s and stuff, they do a mm -hmm. thing. And basically it's like, I just want it to make it sound like I've been mixed. Right. My goal as a player, really, like you guys are monster players. It's like, you know, it's like, I don't want to see a front of house guy do this anywhere. That means yeah. whatever I'm giving him is, is not wrong. good. Yeah. I want to see a front of house guy do this. Yep. It's right. I'm just going to yep. roll make it up. louder. Yep. And so a lot of my, philosophies and thoughts on compression is like, man, I just want it to feel mixed. I just want it to feel nice and smooth. It's really great if you're in that pseudo fusion-y kind of lane to just add, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of compressoraholics in that world. <laughs> and if you're, uh, you know, from the Southern side of the tracks and you worship at the altar of Ray Flack and Brent Mason and Albert Lee, it's like, you gotta have some squeeze on <laughs> it for right, that man. too, you know? Right. And that's why the knobs are really simple. The big knob is not the level. That's what. That's a really fun story. Me and Ke Kevin's like, are you sure you don't want the biggest knob to be the level? I was like, it should be the ratio. So we treat the, the you know, we, we treat it a bit more like a studio compressor, right. where it's like one to one, and then mm -hmm. it just kind of sweeps around. Um, but yeah, I couldn't be more proud of it. Pete's touring with it. Uh, Miles Kennedy, uh, he's he mentioned in a magazine how much he loves it. Nice. His pedal on his board. So yeah. it's it's not just a thing. It is something that I designed, much like the guitar. It's something I designed to solve the problems that I ran into. But ironically, it ended up solving other people's problems. You know. Well, right. Dad Gone, you just sold another one. I know man. two oh, wait, actually, man. two probably. Yeah, because you know really we're great. both com compressor nerds, I know, man. We got big always time. looking for the better one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's well, such a thing, man. Well, let's wrap this up with just a little bit of a personal story for the two of us because yeah. we've had some of these guitars yeah. hiding in our offices yeah, right, for, right. for a while here. Yeah, the, the samples. Well, what what's great is when those samples showed up, pulled it out of the box, immediately playable. Like, yep. perfect. Like, pretty much in tune. I mean, shipped across mm -hmm. the country, landed at my office, opened open the box, and it's in tune. Un and just flawless, man. Flawless. Yep. Every note is a gem, man. From here to here, man. Every note. So I, I, you actually brought this into my office and we're like, yeah. check this out. Check this yeah. out. So I, I went, 
right, and ordered one. <laughs> yeah, you know, first not this went, model, straight, yeah, just... went straight to the website. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, here? What are we doing here? This, <laughs> yeah. I want that. I want that. Yeah. So I mean, that's a, that's my personal endorsement. Yeah. Is, man, played a couple chords and I was ready to go. It's yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's how I came to the company. You know, it's like I I didn't start off as a signature artist. My career wasn't big. Thirteen years ago, I yeah. was you know just scrapping away at like at MySpace. In MySpace, <laughs> right? It's like and so um, you know I bought my first first sir. Uh, it's a really fun story. So I bought my first Sir. They gave me a little bit of a discount, you know, and like, all right, you know, and it was a modern. It was mm-hmm. that kind of model. And uh, John was standing there at NAMM, and I'd never met any of the team or anything. And John goes, hey, man, you should go plug it in, try it out. I was like, ooh, in and on over how good it looked. Oh, right. it plays great. You know, he's like, go on, plug it in. They would do one of those big ISO booths. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, go in there and you know, play with Scott. And I was like, I thought Scott was somebody that, Put the tuners on or <laughs> right. something. I walk in, it's Scott Henderson. And I was like, <laughs> so I sit down and we jam. We jam for like thirty minutes, and uh, like I, I was just like, um, like you know, yeah, Scott young Henderson. Me, like jamming with Scott. I was like, yeah. this is great. We go out, you know, I step out, and uh, you know, from there it was like it was really on because you know the lineage and the players and stuff. And so as my career grew, you know, I started. Uh, being able to bring a little bit more to the table for yeah. the team. And then I really started finding my voice and finding my statement. And that's the the end evolution, I think, of any artist. is like you really start finding what's you. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah. love Eddie Van Halen more than yeah. anybody, but that's what what he does is not what I what I do, you know. Right. Or any any of our heroes. Right? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's all right. just through the filter, you know, it's like filter. everything comes in and it gets filtered into the brain and comes yeah, out and here. You man. just kind of go yeah. down the the buffet of life picking yeah. your favorite things that's it, and, and then you make your own thing. And I think that really mirrors and echoes what Sir is about. Like you can go down the aisle and be like, I love this, but I want that bridge with the band. You know, it's like yeah. it's really the custom the, the ultimate in custom boutique guitar, you know. Right. Well, with having said that, that kind of kind of says it all right there. And man, thanks so much for sitting down with us and, yeah. and sharing your passion for for everything, sir. The, the effects, the amps, the guitars, the whole the whole story. Man, it's easy because the stuff's good. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm not trying right. to say anything. It's oh, not man. not real. <laughs> it's so good. And I also have to mention that as we're filming this, your first single from your new album is dropping, and the album yeah. itself, uh, by the time this video goes live, will be be out there for you to check out as well. Be sure to check out everything at Andy's doing is patreon youtube social media website you're everywhere man and, yes. and on tour as well so be sure to uh, be sure to catch andy out, out there in the world yeah it's just andywoodmusic.com that'll get you to all, get the, you all the stuff awesome don thanks for sitting down with man, us today absolutely glad to be here we're so excited about this when we announced it at the meeting we got a big round of, uh, of applause that sir was now here at sweetwater we're super excited about it we hope you are as well be sure to check out all of sir's products at sweetwater.com and then contact your sweetwater sales engineer they can give you the whole story and also help you choose the exact perfect instrument for your musical needs thanks for joining us i'm mitch gallagher from sweetwater Thank you.